Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, in of all praise, it's the most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement of the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge it, Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening, gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand the events that are currently happening on the earth, so we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Brethren, a sister sent me this article here. I'm going to touch base a little bit on it because this is another example of how when they can't deal with a subject, they can't deal with the subject of who we are and how we fulfill prophecy. The Gentiles and the heathen will go and make up another prophecy somewhere else. They've already made up all of these events happening over there in the so-called Middle East. They set up another people in 1948 in a land over there in the Middle East, so-called Middle East. They've been trying to make it seem as if those people fulfill prophecy, but they never actually use the Bible to, to actually prove anything. Now you can see how it's all coming to a head. See, the most chosen people have been awakened. We have been given the scriptures. We have been given the understanding through the Holy Spirit to be able to see through these lies. Now, they're making up prophecies that have nothing to do with scriptures in order to bypass our people. I'm not going to get into the scripture. You guys can look uh, into the, um, their, their fake prophecy here. You guys can check this out here on your own. On with the Daily Star here, okay? Make sure they get their credit for their article here. So the ones we're getting this information from. But Russia and Ukraine on the brink of war signals the coming of Messiah and 400-year-old prophecy. See, they're still trying to use that number of 400 years. But can, hey, please, show me in the scriptures where this prophecy was already, you know, talked about by our ancestors thousands of years ago. See, supposedly someone came in the 1700s, something like that, and gave this prophecy to someone. And now they're acting like, hey, this is foolproof. This is what's going on right now. And the thing is, is this prophecy is tied into the coming of the era of Ish's Messiah. And what just showed up a few days ago? Supposedly their Messiah. So you see how they're, they're, this 400-year prophecy is all centered on the Ukraine and Russia and Ish. But none of this is in the Bible. None of this is in the Torah. None of this is in the Old Testament that Ish says that they follow. But see, this won't matter to most people because, they're like we said last video, they're going to follow Ish no matter what. They're still going to try to use Ish as the center of prophecy, but these people aren't the center of what's in the Bible. See, now you're seeing who the Most High has given these scriptures to. Now you're seeing who the Most High is given understanding to. Let's go real quick to the book of Daniel. Oh, no, actually Psalms. Psalms 147. Nineteen and twenty. This is very prevalent to what you're seeing happening right now. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as far and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So you other nations have not known the judgments of the Most High. But you're now you're learning them. You know you do not fit the prophecies of Genesis 15, 13. You don't fit the curses that have been inflicted on our people in Deuteronomy 28, 
15 through 68. So since you don't fit those, what is your uh, your only alternative to go and make up another prophecy and then slap that 400 year number on it? The 400 year prophecy has nothing to do with Russia, the Ukraine and some war and Crimea and in the coming of the of Ish's Messiah. See, now they're not even using the Bible to try to even prove anything that they say anymore. They'll walk around with it when it was used to manipulate the world and to hold them under subjection. But now that the gig is up and the Most High is, has, aris, has risen up his people and given them understanding, it's very easy to see through all the lies. Let's look at Genesis 15 and 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. So, when you're looking at Genesis 15 and 13, then the 400 years, and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. We are the ones who have been afflicted for 400 plus years. Ish does not fit these prophecies. So that's why now all of a sudden they're coming up with these other prophecies that don't even fit the scriptures. Now, just because, see, this is, this is why the Most High is exposing the other nations. Just because you took our book and made it a universal book did not negate the curses, did not negate the prophecies and how they, have, they were pretty much attached to our people. You coming up with a religion that says, oh, those curses don't matter anymore. We're not under the curses. We're under the, the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and we're going to just, you know, we're going to be good as long as we say Jesus Christ. See, now you're at the point where, you know, we've been talking about this 400-year prophecy now for a few years. And you know how it doesn't fit your people. So therefore, now you got, you don't have the Catholic Church trying to break it down. You don't have the Christian churches trying to break it down. You don't have Ish trying to break it down. Because if they're going to try to say, you know, it was Egypt and, you know, the captivity from thousands of years ago, we already know that they were sojourning in the land and they were not, in, they were not enslaved for 400 years. They came into the land willingly to be with their brother, Jacob, I mean, Joseph. So those lies don't, they don't work anymore. Before when it was your blessing and no one would look at anything and no one would research anything, and we had our eyes closed, all that worked. Now you know that doesn't work anymore. So what is your next step here? Make up prophecy. So now, hey, yes, World War III is about to start. But that's the most high making you destroy yourself. Is there going to be a false messiah that shows up? Wait, we'll see. Does that affect us? Absolutely not. Because our eyes are open, we're not going to follow any false messiahs. But since you guys are all empty vessels and you don't think for yourselves, that pretty much shows you that, yeah, you would probably follow a false messiah because you want normal so bad. And he's going to he's gonna promise you normal. He's going to promise you things that he can't deliver. But you won't think for yourselves, so you'll believe it. See, the Most High is opening up the eyes of the Gentiles that are going to cleave to the Most High's chosen people and going to follow our power. But the ones who have not had their eyes open to that will be subject to whatever else just comes up. So if you, if you look at these kind of prophecies right here, and you should say, hey, um, where does this come from? How does this relate? How does this you know, coincide with the Bible that I say that I love? Where are these, where is Russia and Ukraine in the Bible?
you guys are always asking us to prove everything. You're always asking Hebrew Israelites to prove every little thing we say. Why don't you ask your churches to do that? Why don't you ask Ish to prove that? Why don't you see, ask, and tell them to prove where Russia and Ukraine are in the scriptures and how they're getting ready to fight for World War III has something to do with the Bible. Hold them to the same standards that you've been trying to hold us to. You see, we don't care about trying to explain things to you anymore. We did that before when, you know, we were trying to learn these things ourselves and thinking that we needed to get your approval. But we don't need your approval for absolutely anything. You're not in that kind of, of you're not in that kind of standard anymore where we need to go to you to prove anything. We can go to the scriptures and prove things all day long. But it's not for you because you've never accepted the truth anyways. And even to this day, when you're seeing all these things happening around you, you don't accept the truth. You don't accept the prophecies about our people and the things that our people have gone through. All you're doing is trying to, you know, get back to your kind of normal and put us back at the bottom. That's, that's your number one priority. And like I said, that's not going to happen. And these fake prophecies aren't going to come, aren't, aren't coming to fruition the way you want them to and for the reasons you want to. The Most High like said is moving us to the head, moving you to the tail. Most High is exposing everything that you say, showing that you have no foundation for anything that you are bringing to the table anymore. So you can do a little research on that prophecy on your own. It was, it's not worth even looking at because it's not true. That's why I'm not reading the article or anything else, just the title alone. And the, you know, the 400 year and trying to actually supplant our fulfilling a prophecy. That's all that it is. Trying, you know, trying to get people to not look at us and not look at us fulfilling prophecy, but actually just a, a, a pretty much accepting anything that they say. And that's not going to happen over here. And most of has our eyes wide open and we can see right through all the lies that you guys are still trying to push. All praise is to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement of the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. 